Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wonder Draft here on the Wooden Otter. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. My goal today is to make an isometric map of the actual city of Ostboro, which will be an inset of the map we made in the last episode. So join along as we get to use Wonder Draft's detail map tool and I'm going to show you some tricks in order to turn a top-down view map into an isometric map. Let's get started. All right, first thing to do is to open up our Ostboro area map. So what we're going to do today is if you go to menu, there is an option called create detail map. I literally just want the landmass because I'm going to be altering pretty much every aspect of this map so that it is just the city of Osboro. And hit create, and what we have here is pretty obviously a top-down view of the neck. So we're gonna be putting our artist's eye onto this map, and we're going to transform this top-down view, which I'll call the 90-degree view. We're looking at it 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. We're looking straight down on it. We're gonna turn this into an isometric map. So the principles of an isometric map, uh, you're basically looking at something kind of 45 degrees off of the surface rather than 90 degrees off of the surface. If you're looking at this shoreline and you're at 90 degrees off the surface the way we are now, it has this orientation. If you were to look at it off of the surface, it would be like this, right? Shorelines look flat when you're standing right on them. But obviously, that's not what this is. And we're not looking at it from the surface, which is the horizontal line, or the 90 degree line, which is this angle. Right? We're not looking at it straight down, and we're not looking at it from the surface. We're looking at it kind of in between those two. So, in order to do that, the rule of thumb is you want to change the angle of this shoreline to be halfway between this angle and this angle, right? So you're not directly above something, you're not on the surface, you're halfway in between. So all of the angles will be halved as well. So bear with me and just comment down below if you don't quite understand what I'm doing. So that's our new shoreline. We've changed the angle. We've changed it from this angle to this angle. Now, the same way we change the angle of the shoreline on this lake, we have to change the angle of the bay on this lake. So I want to keep this point here. I want to keep this here because this is a good distance for the neck. But what we do is basically change the angles only in the opposite direction, the same way we did before. So Our bay isn't that smooth. It's not. <laughs> it's not a weird little peninsula of water sticking into our mountainsides here. It's got crags and crevices. So I'm going to take my lower tool. I don't want it to be that rough though, but I am going to make it nice and big. So we'll set our big castle into the mountains, and what I want to do is kind of create a perspective as though my symbols are climbing the mountain. So like if I place this here, it looks like it's behind, but if I were to draw steps in here and then color this area black, it would appear as though... You know, you're climbing up the mountain and then stepping into this. And then if I put buildings on top of it, it could be like buildings poking out of the mountain. For example, if I did this, you know, it could be basically 
like openings in the mountain. So the way I want to draw the mountain is by basically drawing my landmass. And I'm going to draw my landmass kind of aggressively going up. Right? We can get a real teeny tiny size. Not a real teeny tiny size, but like if this is a mountaintop, right? And like this is the rest of the mountains going up. We can change the rest of it. You see the outline. You get basically a silhouette of a mountaintop by doing that. Now it looks as though we've messed up the water line. But don't don't let that fool you. We're going to change the color of this mountain. I mean, everything is going to be white until I say otherwise. First thing we need to do is just to give it a sense of scale, we're going to put a couple of docks in here. These docks are going to set the scale of our drawing. I know these aren't docks. They're like wall walls or something. Wall tops or whatever. Um, but the first thing they're going to do is I'm going to treat them as docks. Dwarven docks. And they're going to set the scale for our city. Now, believe it or not, I actually, this is the second attempt that I've made on doing this. And one thing that I did on the first attempt that I liked, even though I ended up not liking that whole map, is I like the idea of like an elven enclave inside the dwarven walls. Like a place where the elves can go and live, not underground, and kind of like be among their own kind. And we're going to keep this kind of uh, separate from the rest of the city. And I like it so much. I like the idea so much that I'm actually going to... I'm going to make it like a walled off thing. It's going to be a walled off thing where basically... I, I, I'm tired of the cliche where... Dwarves and elves don't get along. You know? I think I think dwarves and elves are both really, you know, long-lived creatures. Right? And they shouldn't they shouldn't be at each other's throats. They shouldn't they should be less adversarial than they're shown in pop culture, I think. So I kinda like this idea of the dwarves kind of building a protected little area, maybe with woods in it where an elven enclave can live. They're buddies. You know, humans are little puppy dogs to them in terms of lifespan, so the dwarves and the elves... I know this rock sticks out, and that bothers me. But we'll just have to get along without it. The dwarves and the elves kind of get along, and so the dwarves built this, like, sheltered enclave where nature can run rampant and the elves can live. I, I like that idea. Let's talk like a mountain shelf. We could do this... And then paint it back at an angle. So now, see, by doing that, is I can go back to my symbols. And anything I place along here can kind of be colored to show like a shelf of rock. Or maybe two shelves of rock. Imagine one coming here and then a staircase down to another shelf. So you know it's still up the mountain. But there's other access points that you really can't get to unless you're a dwarf.
All right, so now our goal is to paint this area. All right, let's start plopping down labels.
Well, guys, that'll have to be it for this episode of Wonder Draft. I hope you enjoyed making this exterior map of Osboro. I think the next Wonder Draft video I'm going to make is going to be an interior map of Osboro, which I think is going to be very challenging to do, uh, simply because there's no water. It's going to be all land. And it's, I'm going to have to figure out a way to show tunnels dug into the interior of a mountain in a map uh, without making it look terrible is the goal. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to do that without, uh, you know, blowing 20 hours of work on a map only to dumpster it like I did on the map I made previously to this one. It was terrible. Don't ask me to show it to you. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video of Wonder Draft on how to make an isometric map out of an existing map that you've already made of a region. Uh, if you did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to. I appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time here on the Wooden Otter. Peace!